Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. It's uh, Tuesday, November 27th, 2012. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. So we left off with this article talking about how the U.S. created the Syrian opposition led by big oil just like in Libya. Uh, we were also discussing um, Turkey. How about Turkey's just as pro-Israel as the United States is, so never mind all the rhetoric. And that Qatar is a big force. Uh, they really are. And uh, Hamas has controlled opposition. Uh, I even saw articles about uh, Qatar being involved in uh, climate change carbon trading, carbon trading tax scheme. So, I mean, you know, they're behind a lot of things. The invasion and regime change in Syria, uh, what was going on funding Hamas with the recent conflict in Israel. So, we have Syrian rebels take key military base. This is what I was referring to uh, before last week when I was talking about the Syrian opposition basically uh, making huge gains. Sir, uh, it says here that the Syrian rebels captured a compound following the seizure of an army airport in the same area last week. It says that they seized um, this military base with artillery stockpiles. So, this is very interesting. It's an oil rich strategic province bordering Iraq. Why? Because this is a kind of uh, an indicator, a red flag, or basically it shows you as far as the timeline goes, you know, because everything, like I said, is, is for the most part, it's planned. Um, that when they start, when these rebels and these terrorists and these mercenaries start invading military compounds and, and getting stockpiles of weapons, that uh, just like Libya, that's the turning point. That is the turning point when you can pretty much say that Syria is going down. I hate to say it, you know. Uh, it's like I don't want to pick sides here, but, you know, I think having sovereign nations and letting them decide their own fate um, is pretty important, especially now with this, uh, you know, nation building and, and destroying in the name of humanitarianism. Syrian rebels briefly captured a helicopter base near Damascus, destroyed helicopters, looted ammo, and left. So, the reason for the attacking of the air bases is due to um, the Assad government's ability to rely on air power and so they said that they can't hold these uh, bases after the attack they basically just grab everything that isn't nailed down and retreat before uh, the government uh, counterattacks so Syrian rebels se uh, seize important hydroelectric dam in the north they claim 10 children killed in cluster bomb attack in Damascus suburbs yeah, I remember seeing that uh, about cluster bombs killing children blame it on the on the government of um, on the Syrian government, so a lot of propaganda is out there from North Korea and, and same go crap with Iran. They continue to expand their gains in the north of the country today, having captured this dam, an important um, hydroelectric dam of the Euphrates River. The Free Syrian terrorists, which led the attack, apparently seized large amounts of ammunition from the dam's defenders. So there you go again. I mean, they're already planning the, the, what they're going to do after, like they did in Libya. Investors ready to go to Syria. The United Arab Emirates-based businesses are willing to join the reconstruction. I'm sure they are, right? <laughs> so, they'll have uh, an investment worth $1 billion in Syria across different sectors of the post-Assad era. So, pretty interesting, you know, that these uh, uh, greedy businessmen are already um, talking about uh, how they're going to divvy up these contracts and uh, and uh, issue uh, credit and stuff like that. Uh, you know, when it's all in the name of humanitarianism and they go in there and talk about cluster bombs killing children and uh, all these different uh, insane stories about the what the Syrian government's doing, what the West and these outside governments are doing, right? Uh, attacking, um, you know, different uh, religious sects. Uh, uh, just kidnapping people, throwing people off buildings. They're very, very brutal. So, you know, in other words, the blood will be on their hands, and they're already uh, uh, doing this. But it, like I said, the, the irony or the craziness is that they're doing this in the name of humanitarianism. Uh, at least that's what they say. But according to the Brookings Institute document uh, for a post-Assad, you know, regime change, that's what they want. They want a regime change. So they'll, they'll cook up whatever excuse they have to come up with. And uh, if uh, people just stand by and say, well, yeah, that's okay, you know, that's okay. Go ahead and take my tax dollars and start killing people uh, so that uh, you can make a bunch of money off the contracts. And, hey, go ahead, you know. War of spies begins in Syria. Rebels set up own intelligence service. I'm sure they did, right, with the assistance, of course, with the Mossad and CIA, NSA, and all the uh, usual suspects. The 
rebel terrorists announced the creation of a security service to defend the Syrian revolution in a country that has been awash with feared intelligence agencies for the past five decades. So, it's interesting that they call refer to them as revolutions. Really, they're, they're regime changes, right? Just like how they had in Russia and China. And they impose dictatorships against the people's will. And what they want to do is impose a theocracy. Uh, dictatorship, and that's what Qatar wants, and that's what the Gulf Cooperation Council GCC wants. I've covered this before from an article from Stratrisk, which was saying that they wanted theocracies. So, it's just interesting though, because you always hear about Germany about being a dictatorship, but if you look at the history, they actually elected that. And they actually went through the democratic process of it. So, but you can see the whitewashing um, of history, and and just in the past of uh, the past couple of years about what's going on in the Middle East. Al-Qaeda virtue police show up along NATO-protected Turkish-Syrian border. The NATO-backed terrorists along the Turkish-Syrian border establish an Al-Qaeda-style virtue and vice police, heralding the West's true designs for Syria. So this is what we're just talking about. An obscure, unreported pair of Getty images created on 21st of November depict mass armed terrorists atop a building with the words, Committee for Promotion of Virtues and Prevention of Vice, scrawled across its facade. Uh, it says here the images were taken in Al Bab, northern Syria. So there you go. There's the pictures. It's kind of like in church, right? In reality, the West and its media agencies are continuing to bury a premeditated U.S. Israeli Saudi, don't forget Qatar, plan to fund and arm sectarian extremists to over overrun Syria. But it also goes on and says the virtue police are simply a manifestation of NATO backed terrorists flooding over the Turkish border. Remember, they're getting funded. Uh, by Turkey uh, with arms and backup pickup trucks and sending them back with, uh, you know, replenishing their mortars and stuff like that. It's actually according to the plan of the Brookings Institute to keep a, flesh, a fresh supply and replenish uh, these, the quote, opposition with weapons from the Turkish border to flow back into Syria and wreak havoc. So it's all about the body count, just like in Israel. And a different source, Contra-style death squads set groundwork for future Syrian colonized governments. So after the failed attempts to unleash a civil war in Syria, Syrians mobilized to combat abuses of the terrorist gangs. Uh, West began to sculpt the image of the Syrian opposition a new way. So far as the alternative to the government of Assad discussed sit in Turkey, the Syrian National Council um, says uh, if funded by Qatar and it's under the full control of the French military intelligence. Interesting. Yeah, France is backing the opposition there, but then France is backing Palestinian statehood, the General di uh, uh, Directorate of External Security. So, sorry about this. This is kind of the way that they're wording it. It's very weird. It must be a translation or something. Or what's important, what we're going to be getting into is most of the members of the Istanbul Council represented Muslim Brotherhood. The main fighting force is still guided by Turkey and equips the free Syrian terrorists recruited from the Syrian deserters, criminals, insurgents, Al-Qaeda, Salafis, and Jihadists. About 80% of the units recognize their spiritual leader dwelling in Saudi Arabia. The command center is militant in the Turkish city of Adana near the U.S. military base um, and controlled by the CIA through which Americans have the legal gangs provide financial information and logistical support. So, uh, you know... We're looking at that article about um, a war of spies begins in Syria. Well, there you go, right? So I remember mentioning this before about um, a tactic uh, that the globalists or, and or Zionists like to use is, uh, is a controlled opposition and exploiting and uh, co-opting minority oppressed groups, minority groups that are oppressed, um, like Palestine. So, it, you know, it's in the interest for Israel to have that uh, constant... Uh, like they're the aggressor, they want to be the aggressor. They want to, they want to scare the Palestinians and the Gazans when they're demolishing their homes and stuff like that. And um, they like Egypt to be quote a big Muslim state, uh, uh, you know, because they have a puppet there. So uh, it, it gives them the reason to always be on the defense and on the attack, really. Uh, but another state is Kurdistan, and I keep trying to cover this because this is a state that will probably be propped up. Uh, but it will have a puppet government and everything else. So, so they can run their drugs through there and they can get their oil. Syrian Kurds seek to reunite divided ranks. And that was Yahoo. This is a better source. Uh, Antiwar.com, Iraqi. Kurdish forces redeploy as situation calms. The Kurdistan Prime Minister expresses hope deal will stand. The Iraqi military 
and uh, the Kurdish forces have reached a deal in which both sides will redeploy out of the disputed area between the Kurdistan regional government's recognized borders and the surrounding areas. It uh, aims at calming tensions of the past week, which saw both sides adding more and more troops to the area and many expressing concerns that the civil war could break out in any moment. So, uh, again, you know, it's just all part of the plan. Everything's calming down now. I think even in Yemen, they're signing, they're sitting down with the secessionists of the South, um, who they deem Al-Qaeda and terrorist. Uh, they're sitting down with them now, too. So, Turkey confronts a resurgent Kurdish threat. It goes on and says, The rebels, observers say, appear to be taking a cue from the recent Arab uprisings, totally induced, seeking to inspire a Kurdish spring among segments of a stateless ethnic group. So, also, uh, just uh, recently you have Jordan, a little bit of an instability there due to prices and uh, um, uh, political, uh, from King, Ab what was it, uh, King Abdullah? Uh, basically, they want to reform. They want political reform. So, next up, Turkey, top opium producer. Turkey has the largest share of the opium poppy cultivation among the six countries in the world that legally produce the notorious plant under the supervision of the United Nations. Interesting, Turkey's opium poppy field uh, farms make up 54% of the total opium areas in the world. However, India produces the majority of opium utilized by big pharma companies. A little sidestep while we're on the opium issue, Pentagon wants to keep running its Afghan drug war from Blackwater headquarters. The U.S. war in Afghanistan is supposed to be winding down. That's right, they're going to keep troops. They're going to stay past 2014. It's contractor-led drug war, not so much. So there's a uh, basically a, a compound called Camp Integrity. Sorry. The Pentagon stations a small group of officers to oversee the U.S. military's various operations to curb the spread of Afghans' cash crops of heroin and marijuana, which help uh, line the Taliban's pockets. It says only Camp Integrity isn't a U.S. military base at all. It's a 10-acre Afghan headquarters of the private security company formerly known as Blackwater. I think it's a Z, Z company now. Those officers work for an obscure Pentagon agency called the Counter Narco Terrorism Program Offices. That's basically competition, right? Not that they're trying to stop it. They just want to stop the competition. It's uh, grown into one of the biggest dispensers of cash for private security contractors in the entire U.S. government and it sees a future for itself in Afghanistan over the long haul. Next up, Afghan opium cultivation rose this year in Afghanistan, the UN survey shows. It says an alarming trend despite a major opium eradication effort by the Afghan government. Uh, governors, right, yeah, I'm sure. The poppy cultivation uh, increased by 18% between 2011 and 2012. Now, do I give a two crats about them growing poppy? No, dude, I just, they need to, whatever it is that they can make a living, they need to be able to do that. It's just that, uh, you know, you have these foreigners, like every, every time else. Every, every other uh, situation, you have foreigners coming in, exploiting whatever resource that that country has. And that's their sovereignty. And they, and they go in there and act as if they're doing something humanitarian, and they're actually there uh, taking part of it. Uh, Russia alarmed over record Afghan heroin busts. The Federal Drug Service reported that over 175 kilograms of heroin have been seized in a year-long police operation. It says that um, the record haul points to a failed drug trafficking efforts by coalition forces in Afghanistan. So maybe this is what Clinton is referring to when she says that a new Silk Road is the key to strategy for Afghanistan. Also interesting that she said what I said uh, last week. If you look at the map, you see why Afghanistan has been fought over and part of the great game for so many generations because of its strategic position, but uh, also it's because of its resources rare minerals. I think they even have oil there and uh, their opium trade. So it's, I doubt it's her vision. <laughs> She's told what, what her vision is of this new Silk Road, which is a web of trade and transportation links reaching from Central Asia to India. So they're actually trying to do this as well um, around uh, India and South Asia, create this hub uh, to compete with China. But they also have uh, terrorist rat lines as well, where they come from North Africa and other places, and they go right up to, uh, 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 to Syria and Russia's doorstep. A body of Turkish ex-leader shows signs of poisoning, says a paper. Autopsy showed that he was poisoned. He had in the reason, they say, was he had angered some of his, uh, with his efforts to end the Kurdish conflict and contributed to poisoning to DDT. Israel is developing an ethnic bomb for growing biological weapons arsenal. So this is where we'll uh, return 
uh, talking about uh, assassinations and poisonings and stuff like that. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.